All right, 425, Jeff Groby, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. How was your Halloween? Uh, it was really fun. I uh, got out with the little kids and did some trick-or-treating. Did you go as a CPU? Uh, no, I actually went as a virtual CPU. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are such nerds. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate that. I think uh, that's a compliment for me because you know me. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to computers. Uh, all right. Anything uh, new on the horizon? Anything uh, that uh, you know we ought to know about? Every week there seems like there's some kind of something. You know, um, in my personal experience, there's been a big ramp up in um, in exploits, attempted exploits through LinkedIn. Um, we've oh, actually yeah. personally seen it happen at Sumner One ourselves. So, really? Yeah. All right. Um, explain that. Well, on LinkedIn, as you know, it's a social media network. Yes. Um, it's primarily oriented towards the workforce and the workplace, um, but you can make friends and you know link to them and, and first first degree of separation or whatever. I like your tie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I type on there. But uh, what we've seen is um, people that might you know be a legitimate contact for you. Somebody hacks their account and then they start spamming all of their contacts with what looks like a legitimate email or message like, hey, you can make extra money doing this in your spare time or something like that. And if you click on the link and open up the document, it does something insidious on your machine. So, oh. yeah. Yeah, and that's so sad because, I mean, people are because so hopeful to find a job. Right, it's very trustworthy. So um, we've spent a lot of time and resources over the past couple of weeks at Sumner One ourselves saying, hey, if you get these types of links, call uh, call my help desk and we'll walk you through, you know, whether it's legit or not. So, what What is the impetus for somebody doing that? Is it just to say, I can do it? Is there some sort of nefarious uh, joy that they get when it becomes a national story or because most of the time when these guys, you know, implant these, uh, what do you call them? Viruses. Viruses, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I just had my flu shot. <laughs> I can tell, <laughs> the super duper one. Yeah, there. right, it was super senior serum, sir. <laughs> uh, but most of the time when the viruses uh, are implanted, you know, I mean, it's not that big a deal because it happens all the time. So right. what's, is it just? Some of it's bragging rights. Um, and some of it's people who really want to watch the world burn and you know there's just that element out there and then some of it's legitimately people that are trying to make money they're trying to install a cryptocurrency miner on your phone or on your device or something like that and then your device becomes a zombie slave with thousands of other devices doing some task basically for them so. okay so question one today for you uh, when we're talking about cybersecurity so how can you tell when data has been breached what what happens? Um, it's hard. Generally, you you have a system of controls in place that let you know that that has been breached. Most of all of your good backup solutions and disaster recovery solutions and your antivirus software, your anti malware software, they all do a fairly decent job nowadays of saying, "Hey, this is abnormal behavior happening on your machine. We're gonna." quarantine it, isolate it, and then you need to make an assessment whether or not to remediate it at that point. Um, but there's always going to be that small percentage of events that occur that are what we call evolved events, and you, you run into issues with and those. And Jeff, does it look different when you're at home and something like that happens versus at work, or is it the same? No, it's pretty much the same. It's just that it's so much easier in the, you know, I guess in the workplace, people are so used to certain types of protocols that are used to communicate with coworkers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you get a legitimate email from a LinkedIn account and it looks like it's a business oriented thing, you're you're more conducive to click on that without thinking about it. Whereas home you might you might actually step back and go, Yeah, that looks like spam, you know. Mm -hmm. But at work you just don't you don't have that mindset. And so you're trying to get everybody to think critically no matter mm -hmm. where they're sitting at any point in time. Yeah, well and at work you can just have them fix it well, versus your home computer. That's why I keep my home computer here. Right. <laughs> no, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but but truthfully, Mr. Uh, Mumbagwe said that I was uh, a distant relative of one of his clients at a bank. Absolutely. And there was $10 million waiting for me if I would just uh, contact him. Uh, yep. Why shouldn't I? The, fi the, the, the famous <laughs> Nigerian scammers. Um, they yeah. need, you know what they need? I'll tell you, they can make a whole bunch of money. And listen, if you're they a Nigerian... They a whole bunch of money. Well, I know they do. Yeah. I, I know. But if you want to make more money... All right, I'm going to tell you, Nigerian scammers, listen to me. If you're living here and you're a Nigerian scammer, I tell you something you will never forget, okay? And this is something you have to listen to, uh, the radio guy, because he knows what he's talking about. Uh, hire me 
to do spell check for you. Oh, oh yeah, that's okay. good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the number one. You know, people don't realize this, but when it comes down, you know, if, if you ask me right now, mm -hmm. Jeff, what's the number one thing that you could do today to start detecting fraudulent activity on the internet, I think my response will be grammar and spelling. Be very critical of things that are sent to you that have spelling and grammar errors, and because nine times out of ten, I bet you they're fraudulent. Yeah, so. if, a, if a sentence ends with the word and and a period, um, <laughs> you've got to be suspicious <laughs> of that activity. So you mean I can never respond to my 13-year-old cousins that send me emails occasionally with you know, pictures? <laughs> That's a different story. Okay. I mean, obviously, you got to weigh each case, but, but it really is yeah. sound advice, especially in the office. Mm -hmm. If somebody sends you a memo via email and it's just wonky, uh, I would be very critical. And so what we encourage people to do is then call the IT help desk and confirm it at that point, and we'll look at it. So. Is it a, a greater propensity of these incidents happening around the holidays simply because more people are online? Doing shopping absolutely, and absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now right now we're ramping up and especially Black Monday. Um, that's gonna be a, a nightmare level day for these types of exploits. Yeah, next time you come in, maybe we can talk about uh, the safeguards with respect to people going online to make sure. purchases and how they can know if they're a legitimate site and, yeah. and protect absolutely. themselves. Yeah. I'd love to do that. All right, sure. sounds good. We'll do it next time. Perfect. Uh, all right, anything else we missed? Nope. Just uh just be smart and be critical and Stay safe on the internet. Well, I am critical, but I'm not sure I'm smart. <laughs> but uh, thanks for coming yep. in, Jeff. Thank Jeff you. Proby, Sumner One, online SumnerOne.com. That's Tech Talk with Guy and Sherry, along with Matt Man here on the Big 550. It's 431 Traffic Today, sponsored by Coach Harder Driving School, specializing in developing the novice student into a safe and confident driver. Visit CoachHarder.com.